You are now listening to Talk Your Jizz Podcast. Welcome back to the Talk Your Jits Podcast. This podcast is, <coughs> excuse me, as the name implies, all about jiu-jitsu. I'm your host, Lamar Smith. And today's guest is a secondary black belt who trains a hybrid ju- jiu-jitsu located in Monroe, Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, Andy Stellari. How's it going, man? <laughs> it's going good, sir. How are you doing this morning? Good. Pretty good. Pretty good, man. So doing daddy duty <laughs> stuff right now, too, so... <laughs> Yeah, man, I, I greatly appreciate your your patience, man. I know we've been we've been scheduling this for like a few few months now, so we finally got it going. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. No problem, man. I totally get it. Totally understand. I got two daughters, in my kid, or I myself, and then I got a stepson too. So I totally understand. So. <laughs> the, the the constant struggles of fatherhood. <laughs> oh yeah. Constantly. Well, uh, <laughs> never end. Well, let's well let's get the ball rolling, man. If you want to introduce yourself again, by all means, and let's hear your jujitsu journey. Yeah. Well, like I said, my name is Andy. I'm a second degree black belt in uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. I'm also a uh, third degree black belt in uh, in uh, judo, and um, and a fifth degree black belt in uh, Japanese jiu-jitsu. So, what I tend to do at, at my school is to combine everything at one time right just combine everything together so that um so that everybody gets the full aspect of what jiu-jitsu actually is um Mm -hmm. like i started when i was about 10 years old i was in the karate back in ohio and then uh it just kind of evolved from there over over the years so i did some karate i did uh kickboxing i did judo taekwondo i Keto, uh, Muay Thai down here in the South and right in Georgia. I, I fought for Megalodon under Chris Scott Hicks, who recently passed away not too long ago. Um, mm. so, so I did got a fight record, um, right to that. And so I did, did, um, over the years, I just took all my experience to about 20 some years and then just combined it right into one, hence the word hybrid Jiu Jitsu. So, and it, Took me a minute to actually get my BJJ black belt because uh, back in the '90s, as we all know, if you're if you're around if you're around my age, around 50 or so, um, you know there wasn't quite the uh, there wasn't an academy on every single corner like there is now. Just about um, any small town, major town that you go to nowadays, man, you're going you're going to find somebody someplace somewhere um it's just it's just a matter of you just gotta search the internet and that that's it but I mean, back in the 90s and early 2000s we didn't have that so um so i competed mm-hmm. i went i competed i did judo um i did find a couple guys that i still con- consider to be really good friends and they have influenced my jiu-jitsu a great great deal and um and uh, actually, one of my former instructors gave me a blue belt in uh, his uh, jiu-jitsu style, which gave me a black belt in uh, judo, just because of the training and whatnot that we did over the years. So, um, mm-hmm. so I've been around for a while. I've been around for a while, man. Man, I'm about fifty years old. Um, I remember watching the first uh, UFC right at my college dorm. So my freshman year. So that was like that was exciting, and so we just took that what we saw, and uh, we took it to our judo class, and then we just started working on it. So, and then we found a guy who actually did uh, jujitsu. It wasn't Brazilian jujitsu, but it was jujitsu nonetheless. And then uh, he's very high ranking in and and uh, judo. His name was uh, Dave Vaness, the uh, dirty the uh, dirty grappler. So, so he taught me a lot, uh, and. And uh, and I was after college, and you know I still talk to him to this day too. So he's pretty pretty interesting guy. So <laughs> very heavily into the combat of jujitsu. So so yeah. So he's also a BJJ black belt too. So um, and a uh, 
Japanese Jiu Jitsu. So everyone, every one of my instructors, I will say this, has had or is currently some former fashion of a of a military or else uh, law enforcement. So so I get a whole wide spectrum of the combat aspect of it. So which is what I like. And um, you know, and being an old man myself and doing old man jujitsu <laughs> to say the least, you know, we kind of we kind of to take that to heart and all the training that we've done, man, we just um you know, we can we can hang in there with everybody else too. So it's just a matter of man, we got to slow down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so We're not young anymore. The, oh, excuse me. So what's the mm-hmm. difference between you know uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and Japanese Jiu Jitsu? Well, to be really honest, the uh, Japanese Jiu Jitsu has a lot more stand up, just like in judo, right? So if you want to speak in Japanese jiu-jitsu terms. You can also speak in uh, ju- uh, judo terms too, because they're hence they're like one and the same. The only thing that actually steps them apart is the rule set of them, and um, the and the Japanese jiu-jitsu has more. It's more of a com- combative art. Okay, so so if you look at it um, historically. Even with the samurais and whatnot, they use the their uh, jiu-jitsu was to was to be used unarmed combat because their sword got taken away or they lost a sword or something like that. So, um, and if you want to really want to speak it um, historically too, the Brazilian jiu-jitsu um, had a lot more stand up, especially from the Gracies from the Japanese influence because they brought over judo um, from mm-hmm. from Japan to. To Brazil, so the stand-up was very much very predominant. They did a lot of striking. Uh, they actually do a lot of striking, and they do a lot of joint throws and and, and like hip throws. So, so when you toss someone to the ground be, before you break their before you break their arm, you can punch them in the face or stomp them in the head. You know, so so just like the old pride. So um, for the modern day, back in the day. If, if you're seeing like a, a pride fight, you know, the only difference that separated the pride pride from the UFC was just the rule set um, more so than anything else. So, and it's also their mindset to, to just saying, because uh, nowadays Brazilian just is more focused on sport than, than, uh, than back in the day, it was more focused on, on uh, fighting. So I, so I recently read a book um it was uh Hicks and Gracie's book you know he, he said the Brazilians just want to fight and 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 so they're um and so that's what they wanted to do so that's what they did and if you listen to some of the older older uh uh grandmasters too that they tell you that too so the Japanese was more hand-to-hand combat fighting there wasn't any sport. There is no sport involved except for judo, and then, um, and and then, so difference is uh, more or less the rule set and what you can and cannot do, and you, and determining how you how you think. Um, now, mm-hmm. I, now, I have seen other instructors and uh, teach uh, wide. They're actually going into more other other. Uh, the Brazilian or uh, the uh, Japanese that used to field to um, for new uh, setups and for new submissions. Um, cause, because I remember when uh, when like wrist locks were were uh, banded <laughs> back in PJJ, and and so right. and uh, we were doing those. I mean, we were doing those like in Aikido. I mean, we we're doing those like in a Japanese Jiu Jitsu. Right? And now every BJJ instructor is doing them. You know, so. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of the arm bars that I've taught 10, that I have learned myself 20 years ago, people are now saying, oh, man, look at this new technique we, we came up with. You know, this is a new, this is a, this is a new thin arm bar, you know, and, it, and it's from a reverse uh, case to tell me. And I was like, man, I, man, I learned that 20 years ago, man. That's nothing new. And so I was telling my instructor, man, he, tell my instructor, man, he was like, man, there is nothing new. I 
underneath the sun. I mean, the only difference is is uh, just the setup, and that's about the extent. And that's the only thing that's actually different uh, more so than anything else. Even some of the judo judo throws. Um, mm-hmm. I remember when I I remember when back in the early two thousands when a lot of um, MMA coaches, uh, which uh, we were which uh, they were called NHB coaches, the was barred. Uh, they're saying, man, judo's no good. Judo's no good. Man, you see all these BJJ coaches now, man. They're all learned judo, man. It, even the Graces, man, they learned judo back in the 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s and so on and so forth, all, all the way through. Yeah. So, so it's just a combination of stuff. So, so to be honest, man, what's like really different between the Japanese and the BJJ? It's a mindset. It's a mindset because, uh, well, the techniques go, they're uh, interchangeable. So, mm-hmm. so it's just a mindset and just uh, uh, sport versus combat. All right. And, but, but I will say this, man, the BJJ, along with, uh, along with judo, they do pressure tests, all, like a lot of their stuff, um, just through rolling and stuff like that. Whereas, whereas the Japanese jiu-jitsu, they don't do a whole bunch of sparring. They don't do a whole bunch of uh, of uh, rain dory. So, um, it, because it's 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 geared towards breaking things. But my mm-hmm. thing is, my thing is, if you don't pressure test it, if you don't spar, then how do you know it's going to work, right? So, right. Because I try a lot of wrist grab breaks and a lot of wrist grab throws when I was coming up, just to interchange man, some of the Japanese stuff. And not all of it works. I'm not going to say that, man. So we not all of it works just because of the reaction of the of the individuals. And, and mm-hmm. uh, you know, so many, some of the wrist locks work, and and uh, some don't. Um, you know, if you if you don't want to be wrist locked, and if and if and if you don't want to be thrown, you're not going to be. So the only way to wrist lock somebody effectively, or else to throw somebody effectively, is to is is to hit them. You got hit them. You got punch them. You got knee them. You got kick them. You got guys, got guys your eyes out. You know, you gotta, um, you gotta do all kinds of manipulations and to pull off a good throw because unless you're a wrestler and, and, uh, and a Jew guy who is very, very quick, throwing is not going to be my first, uh, first attempt, man. Man, I'm going to need an W. Me, I'm an W, and I'm gonna grab your face, and I'm gonna try to shred it beyond belief. So, <laughs> I mean, I mean, I remember watching the movie. Um, what was it? It was the uh, uh, what was it? It was based upon the uh, Thirteen Assassins. It was it was an old it was an old Japanese movie. Um, might have been what is the one? Or what's the one Japanese film samurai film with a Killing reason. I can't think of it. And it's one of my favorite movies. But it might be that one. But like but one of the old ones, I said made the difference between jujitsu and actually I had a great master actually told me this dude, man. He was like, you know what jujitsu is? Jujitsu is if you run somebody over with a car. If you beat him over the head with a brick, if you pick up a stick, that's what jujitsu is. Once you put the gi top on, it's all sport. <laughs> so I was like, you know, I kinda like that saying. So it, Keep that in mind, man, and it's and, and it's more combative, you know, how, how it's supposed mm-hmm. to be. So right. So right. man, you'd be really nice, or else man, you'd be really nasty. And that's why I like well, just, I mean, you got two opposite extremes, but like I tell my students, man, you can be really nice, or else you can actually kill somebody, man. Which one is it? Right? I mean, you can find you have to find your happy ground, you gotta find the happy medium. Because once you go to one extreme to the other extreme, it's it's never gonna be good. You know, I mean, you got to find a happy medium. Got to learn it all, so we need to be effective. Yeah, so gotta be. Yeah, yeah, because it, it's it's crazy. Um, because I just I just saw um this comment in one of the jujitsu groups, and somebody was actually talking about how they've been training like Brazilian jujitsu for a while, and I guess the the school the where he where they moved to. The school teaches jujitsu, and a lot of right. people like, "What's the difference?" And I'm like, I, "I knew there was a difference, but I didn't know like the the significance of the difference between jujitsu and like 
Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Right. Yeah. Um, so it was just like crazy. And it's like, ironically, you mentioned that. So I was like, yeah, what, what is the difference between the two? <laughs> it's a lot of mindset. Um, but, but to be honest, man, I, I, when I teach my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu too, man, um, there's a couple other, uh, other lineages out there of a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu that do the exact same thing where they incorporate everything and they incorporate the strikes, they incorporate the throws. So I guess the Japanese just to me, they have more strikes and throws. Um, and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that we, and so, we'll, and so when we take them to the ground and you can either kick them, you can stomp them, you can punch them, you can break the arms, you can choke them. Whereas in a uh, Brazilian Jitsu, Nowadays, um, not all, but a very large portion are what I call butt scooters, and uh, where they just sit down. You know, I mean, they don't, they don't yeah. attempt to throw because the throw hurts. Yes, they, of course the throw hurts. Of course the takedown hurts. That's the whole point. Man, you're supposed to hurt the point. person, man. It's, that's, yeah, man, this ain't the seven seasons, man. This is not a resort, man. This is a, this is jitsu, right? And, right. And, and, and so I've always told... I've, so when I taught, I've always told my students in the past, and I kind of still do now, but they know me now. I was like, if you want to know if your jiu-jitsu is effective, go get in a fight. Go get, go get in a bar fight. And, um, and that will definitely, definitely see if you're effective or not, if your jiu-jitsu actually works. Because, because yeah, man, about 90% of all, all all fights, man, might end up on the ground. Like, guess what, my man? One hundred percent of them, they all start standing up. Oh, I so, start standing up. Yep. Yep. So you got to. So I mean, you got to learn the stand up back aspect of it. To me, if you have a, if you have like a good striking art and a good grappling art, man, you're fine. You're fine. Whereas, but back back in the day, man, I, man, I knew Taekwondo and karate, and that. And I found judo. And so I was like, man, this is awesome. And then I watched the first UFC and I was like, wait a minute, that's judo, but it's a little bit different because what Brazilians did was they added in the flow aspect in my eyes. Mm -hmm. they, they added in the flow aspect to the judo to make it Brazilian jiu-jitsu, right? So it wasn't so chopped up. It wasn't, it wasn't like, it wasn't step one and then step two and then step three, kind of like step one, two, three, kind of like blended together, flowed, flowed together. And, um, and that's the biggest difference that I saw. It wasn't so much the technique, but it was also the uh, mindset because you also got to look at the environmental aspect of it and also the historical aspect of it in order to truly grasp what the difference is um mm -hmm. of of it too because the because i never been in brazil never i mean i would love to but if i did i might come back to force so so i never been to brazil <laughs> 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 so and i say that i say that jokingly but i've heard a few brazilians who actually said that for real and i was like okay i got it and they're like if you go down married you come back single it's like oh Okay, so I'm not going gotcha. down. So. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. But even like, but even like looking at pictures and even um and even hearing some of what what a professor Robert Drysdale said to me, because he's been down there, I mean, he was like culturally, it's just a different world. And if you look at the environmental resilience, man, there's not a lot of space. Everything's in tight. Yeah, everything, seen pictures, yeah. too, man. everything's in tight. Whereas here in the States, man, and, and and even someone in Japan and kind of, man, even there's tight too, but there's not a lot of room. So up here, man, mm -hmm. man, man, you can go practice, you can go practice throws and takedowns, man, man, right in your backyard. Whereas down there, man, man, if you got a space that's like 20 by 20, and if you got a pack full full of room of like 20 people, man, you can't throw anybody. Man, no. man, you'd be throw anybody right in, right into to each other so i mean so if so that kind of makes sense too and i was like all right so here in the states man we got room this is supposed to be the the melting pot 
of everybody. So why not make a hybrid jiu-jitsu and just add it, add in everything together, man. So I added my Japanese, I added in, I added my judo, I added my uh, Muay Thai, my karate, my BJJ, everything in the one. So, and I make it more combative. Um, you know, I will say this though, man. So I do a very simple, our jiu-jitsu is very, very simple. It's very, um, it's very fundamentally based. Very, I don't do a lot of flash stuff. I don't do, I used to, I used to do a couple couple flying stuff um like the flying arm bars and stuff like that um but you know man may not I, I i'm almost 50 so i can't do that anymore because you know i'm gonna break something break a hip or something yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and so my some of my speed and with my agility has actually gone downhill big time so i just do everything slow and i bring everybody down to my level so if they're going fast and it, if I slow down, I let them wear themselves out, and then I just take advantage of that. You know, once they're tired, then I just go in. So I have a very mm-hmm. defensive style too. So how I roll. So if you want to beat me up, you can try. Go for it. I mean, I used to fight. So whatever I mean, you do to me, I can guarantee is not what I have not done be- before. And uh, whatever you do to me, too, will not be as bad as what my body through the 80s and my childhood has actually gone through before. So, Mm -hmm. so it's so whatever. I mean, everybody says, man, he's a beast. He's a beast. Yeah, man, he's a beast. And he's he's like strong. He's quick. Um, But what good is the beast? And beast, if they they don't have any, if they don't have like the knowledge. Right. So I don't. So I don't. You know, it's like he, just what he let Gracie said to me. And he was, he said, man, he wasn't out to beat anybody. I mean, he let everybody beat themselves. So I let you wear yourself out, and then I just go in for the kill later on. So, so that's yeah. just a whole lot easier. Oh yeah, a lot more effective. Way, way more effective. And it's <laughs> it's weird with um, like when I started learning jujitsu, I didn't really know too much about it. You know, everyone, everyone, you know, always says, right. like, you know, you watch the UFC, which I, I knew about that. And right. the way that we learned jujitsu, it wasn't, it was, it was a little bit of everything. It was, right. you know, it was wrist locks, you know, leg, you know, leg locks and, um, you know, you know, self-defense you know, aspect of it, too. And I'm thinking mm-hmm. that's the norm. Like, I'm thinking that's how jujitsu is supposed to be. Like, we do throws, we do chokes, we do wrist slots, we do all this stuff. But I was then the same way. You hear, same way. Then when you, and when you hear about other schools, it's like, oh, no, we don't practice this, or we don't do that, or we don't do this. And it's like, so what are y'all doing? <laughs> Sitting down on the ground, <laughs> being lazy, <laughs> and then they grab from there. Pretty much. <laughs> Like, you know, I've, I've, you know, heard schools, it's like, yeah, we, we train, but we don't spar, we don't roll, we don't, I'm like, is this a fitness, like, is this, a, like, is this more like a fitness class? I'm not, in, I'm not trying to insult the yeah. school, but it's right, like, right, right, right. Oh, I know. how do you, I know. how do you know if this, if this <laughs> works, if you're not like going because you don't want to, the person who you're training with don't want to, don't want to get thrown or they don't want to get their, you know, shoulder twisted or something like that it's like yeah well well, it's kind of funny you said that because uh, so when i moved down here i was going through judo school because i did judo in college uh, under uh, when he when he my professors okay and Mm -hmm. i and man i've been doing this since i was 10 years old so when i so in my 20s and 30s and everything dude i lived and breathed it like well like i read so many books i watched so many videos man when when that youtube came out oh my gosh man that's the best thing ever man when the internet came out man i learned i learned everything about anything i didn't care what it was what style the more unique it was the lesser known it was the more i wanted to learn that style um because i was all about going against the norm so when i'm first yeah. when i first moved moved down here i went to school that that, that it was only one within a 20 mile radius that actually had judo that, that actually had judo and so and then it had japanese jutsu called a shinshin jutsu 
which was more more of American hybrid jiu-jitsu. So I learned that too. So I went in there, and there was a lot of guys in there who did not spar, especially that, especially like in the end of I keto class. So in order to get my jiu-jitsu black belt, I had to take up I keto. I had to learn karate, which I already knew karate and uh, taekwondo, and then uh, judo. I was like, okay. okay. So I learned all three. So I just kept practicing, practicing, practicing it. And then I kind of realized, man, there's a lot of people in there who would not spar. They just wouldn't spar. They were they were hurt. And they actually would like tell you, or not tell me, they would actually tape up their gis up, put like an X on the gi with a like duct tape or something, this see me where you hurt at. Man, I was like, man, it, if I did that, man, man, my whole gi would be like black. And just like a duct tape, <laughs> man, I, I mean, I'll be like, man, I heard all the time, but you know, I mean, that's, that's not going to stop me because that's just norm, man. I didn't, I mm -hmm. can't remember the last time. I, I think the last time I, that I did not hurt was probably when I was maybe 10 or 12 years old. I mean, I'm just in yeah. chronic pain all, all the time. Not not anything to be concerned about, but just because I'm still rough on my body, man. I've had two yeah. shoulder surgeries. I've had a hip replacement. I'm about to get my second hip replacement done, and right, uh, right this fall. Um, oh, wow. I mean, I've just been, yeah. So the, the people who don't spar, and and then now here I come in, and I'm sparring all the time, and I'm a, and I'm a judo arrogant little ass, and I'm just like, man, I'm better than you. I'm tougher than you. But I will say this. So, out of every one of my instructors, I absolutely love them, and they all taught me something. Every school I've been to, doesn't matter how good or how good or how bad, I've always learned something. Either, mm -hmm. either I learned a technique, or else I learned I don't want to be like this school, and I want to run it this yeah. way. And so, so everything's everything's about perspective. And um, mm -hmm. back in my younger younger days, I wouldn't I wouldn't put things in perspective per se, as much as I do now. As I gotten older, you yeah. get more sure, you get more wiser, you get, you get more positive out, outlook on your life. Whereas mm -hmm. when you're younger, you're just you're just cocky. I mean that's all there's to it. And that's just and that's just life. <laughs> yeah. Just it, is, so, it is what it is. Right. Yeah. So I go into schools and if they don't spar, I said, great. Teach me something. Teach me something Teach me something new, or 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 um, help me fix what I what I already know. Because um, mm -hmm. because they need more man nowadays. Man, 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 once you get so high up, you go to different schools and whatnot, and they're pretty much all the same thing. Um, they're the, the only difference that I actually learn are are the uh, setups, and mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. because the setups is where it's at, but. Uh, let me be honest. I can't do half the half the setups that like most people can, can do now. Like uh, playing X guard, playing that really, really good guard from the knees. Man, I'm not that flexible. I can't do splits. I can't. I can really right. do butterfly guard because because I'm so inflexible at times, man. And my leg strength, my mm -hmm. hip strength, right hip, my my hip strength. I mean, like I try to keep it shape and whatnot, but man, some of these guys are just. Freaking strong, man! They just like put my legs down, man. I'm like, man, what are we, man? This yeah, is, this is crazy. <laughs> so wait, so so, wait. so fair. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, man. I, because I remember where the butterfly guard and the dead rib guard used to be, brown belt and like and like black belt tech techniques, man. They're the white belt stuff now, man. And it's like, man, things have just changed so much, man, over the years, past like 20, 20 years. Like in the past, since um, since well, since uh, 1993, I've seen BJJ go through at least three to four different um, changes within the last 30, 40 years. So, I mean, it's it's uh, said, man, I've seen you just do change over the years. So, it's just mm -hmm. crazy, crazy. It's kind of interesting to see too. So. Yeah, I, I always I always love uh, talking to people that's been doing jujitsu for like, you know, I'll say 20 plus years 
And I, yeah. it's always amazing to hear them like <clears throat> explain like the how crazy it was with them learning jujitsu back then and back then versus oh, yeah. now, where like you <laughs> said, you can throw you can throw you can throw a rock in the wind and hit like seven schools, or you can basically right. learn everything. I'm not gonna say learn everything, but you can learn a plethora of things just by typing in jujitsu, blah blah blah, yep. on YouTube yep. and. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I remember Yo, back my, in the day, all man. Stim- all my seminars and stuff. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I remember back in the day, man. Where, where, man, we used to buy videotapes. Yeah. Uh, VHS tapes, man. And that's and and those are training. We used to buy books of all kinds, man. I, I remember. Uh, I, I remember one uh, one of my very first uh, uh, jujitsu book, uh, Brazilian jujitsu book, was written by who was it? it was, Carlson, Carlson Grace Jr. and uh, Conan, and uh, that was my first one. So it came from the Carlson Gracie lineage, and then um, and then uh, and then uh, Henzo and um, Hoyer came out with one, and then um, Henzo and Craig Kuka, and they made uh, they actually made one of the very first uh, BJJ tapes. I mean, it was called it it was called Gracie Jitsu back then, so. Mm-hmm. So I remember, I, so man, all that stuff, man. We, man, I got a ton of books on uh, judo, classical jiu-jitsu, I, keto, and all kinds of stuff. Still, this day, man, like I use, man, I pull some of that stuff out. You know, man, we do the Muay Thai clinch, man. Like I, I, I should teach my guys, man, um, how to clinch, and I, and I use the Muay Thai clinch uh, with, with my judo background, to and everything. Mm-hmm. So. So, so my God, so actually, man, I have actually used up a lot of, um, I used a lot of my uh, Muay Thai clinch stuff as far as like um, how to break the clinch and, um, and um, how to throw from the clinch from Muay Thai and my Brazilian Jiu Jitsu too. So, um, so I just use everything, uh, everything that I can. So just to teach my guys. So, so my 30, 40 years of, of experience, I try to crank it down for them in like 10 to 15 years and they go. <laughs> yeah. There's me. Yeah. That, so. as, we, as, we, as I like to say, you know, kitchen sink jujitsu, like, every, you know, yes. everything you can you learn go. is just, you know, just incorporated somehow. Yes, exactly. Cause I've, exactly. Cause I've, there's been times I'll go, um, you know, I'll do I'll do kickboxing and boxing and stuff like that. Yeah. And you know, I'll it's getting to a point now where I'll see it see something in another form of martial art that's completely opposite of grappling, and then I'll be like, okay, how can right. I incorporate this type of movement or this type yes. of setup in jujitsu? Right. And yep. it's just and it's and it makes it more and it makes it more fun because it's like. All right, we 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 we're still learning. I mean, obviously, you're still learning jujitsu. Yeah. You never stop learning, but right. you'll be surprised right. what you can pick up from other martial arts. Just you know, exactly. just trying to like find the find the like you know compare to what they do versus yeah. what you can do and and whatnot. Right. Obviously, well within right. rule sets, but yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, but 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 I mean, whatever the you know, whatever the reason don't see it's it's all legal, right? Till you get caught. All right, it's, <laughs> it's all you can you get caught. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. So, what's been like uh, the biggest, um, the biggest impact, ju- like jujitsu, had on you? As far as my living, or as far as how I think, or just yeah, just anything. just just like as a, as a, as a whole, just like in general. Uh, man, it's taught me how to teach a whole lot better. Um, mm-hmm. it, 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 um, it tests my, it tests my patience too. Um, you know, man, I used, I used to be a very patient person until I got into teaching. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then, uh, kids wise, man, kids, man, they will test your limits beyond belief. And then, um, having oh, your yeah. own kids, but. But the biggest impact that I would say is probably how I think. Um, you can do whatever you want to do to me, it, which will probably won't be any worse at like 
that, that anybody has ever done to me before. So, uh, so mm-hmm. I know my limits. I know my limits physically, and I know my limits mentally. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I it takes me a lot to get me mad. It takes me a lot to get me mad. I will blow a lot of stuff off, and then um, just because it's not worth it for me. So, with the mm-hmm. so with the value of that would of that technique that I learned, if it's not going to work for me, then I did then I just then I'm not going to use it. Just like if I find anybody who who's like backlashing me, um, if I if I don't find any words or any any value in what you say, then I dismiss you. I mean, you're not worth my time, so I'm not going to get upset over yeah. it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So it's so it's really not that not that big of a deal because at the end of the day. At the end of the day, it, it does it really matter, you know? Does it right. really matter? I mean, if you got in a fight with does it does it does it really matter? Anything, um, do I? I mean, because Jiu-Jitsu actually has actually brought me closer to my spiritual faith too. So, um, it, 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 and it just has just because. There is because once you're training and once you're rolling, you kind of forget about everything else, and then it's just you. But in those, yeah. so in those moments with me, I tend to do. Um, I tend to not think, and I just tend to pray a little bit more too, do a little bit more with that. Um, um, and, and it just and. And when I'm done, I just feel, I feel better. You know, I yeah. feel like I can actually, I can move, I can walk, I can talk, I can have my head up high. I mean, when I lose, it doesn't matter to me. Um, because mm-hmm. if I'm going to lose, because if I'm going to lose, <laughs> you're going to work for that loss. You're going to work for that win. Yeah. I'm going to make you work. I'm going to make you work. You're going to earn it. Um, and, but gotta there's earn, really no earn, way. Earn this key. That's right. Exactly. But there's really, but I don't I don't get upset by it. I get more disappointed in myself because I was caught off guard. You know, I was caught sleeping or whatever, or mm-hmm. or else man, I was, or else I just got caught and I was like, wow, I didn't see that coming, man. That's that, that's great. You know, right. so that's really good. So, um, and it's also taught me how to be more humble too. Um, so when my students don't tap me out because they do, um, not because you know they're they're better or I'm better or anything. It just happens, right? Um, uh, being a being a black belt, everybody ex- expects you to always win, to type type always win. But if you're always tapping on your students left and right, I mean, what's that teaching them too? You know, is that right. teaching them how to move, or is that teaching them how to tap more often? And then because I had uh, I went through a spell where man, I was I was up to twenty or thirty people. Left and right, and that, and in one month I was down to five because I was, I was either tapping them too too hard on them because because back in the uh, he's back in the nineties and in the in early two thousands, man, we should train hard. I mean, we'd go outside, mm-hmm. man, we'd go on the beach, we'd go inside a sand pit, we would turn the heat on in August and it and in July just to sweat. And and so I mean we would have, I mean we would physically come out in almost like a sweat bloodbath mess. I mean it was brutal, uh, but but you knew your limits. So I was like, all right, so so bring some of that back. Well, I tried to bring some of that back, and before you know it, I was down to the same two or three people. So so I changed mm-hmm. things up. So it taught me how to how to solve problems on the fly just mm-hmm. did because it taught me how to adapt a little bit better to uh, situations whether it be my surroundings whether it be verbal whether it be physical whether it be environmental it, it really doesn't matter um situational so it's actually taught me a whole bunch of stuff um and and it just taught me how to how to talk to people and how to psychologically beat somebody and without using your hands just just to psych them out so which is yeah. really 
which is really not that hard to do if you know how to do it right. Because it's like I said, man, one of my instructors, he was also a uh, professor, but uh, I mean, he did lie detecting tests too. So to me, he's a lie detector. And so, and so I mean, he taught us a lot about psychological warfare. And so, mm-hmm. and so, it, and if you're in a room and if you're, and if you're quiet, everybody expects you just to be a badass. So I was like, all right, so I'm not, I don't talk much. <laughs> and I just, yeah, you know, whatever. But people will assume of me. I don't correct them. I just say, all right, yep, all right, Bye. all right, we're okay. good. <laughs> okay. Yep. Okay. Exactly. They're right. <laughs> like we, we know we we know we're not about to test this theory. So okay. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, if you want this theory, we can yeah. decide. But you know, I, and I've actually talked or told that to, to a few guys too. On coming out, I was like, listen, man, we can go test this theory, man. We can go outside. Not a problem, man. You can, and as soon as you say this, I, you can do whatever you want to do to me. Whatever you want to do, right? Any, anything. But if you touch my balls, the fight's on. And they're like, "You're crazy." And I'm like, "Well, you don't know half of it." So we gotta be crazy, man, to get <laughs> choked out, man, by our best friends, right? I mean, I mean, you enjoy being choked, you enjoy having your arm broken, you know, man. It's, it's all fun and games to us, man. It's all fun. So, yeah. so. So, I mean, to, so I mean, to do jiu-jitsu and to do judo and stuff like that, man, man, you got to be a little bit messed up in the head because who wants to be, be choked out? On, you got to be, man. Who wants to be choked out, man, like on a weekly basis? Come on. <laughs> right. Because I, was, I was joking about this, and I was like, dude, let's just break down the, the, the mental aspect of what we're doing right now. We right. are into a, a, a padded room. And we're paying someone to teach us how to kill each other. <laughs> but first you said we go into a padded room right there. Padded room, man. I just... <laughs> a, padded, a padded room with colorful pajamas. And, and we and we simulate murder on top on each other. You know, really? I mean, what's that song? Really? Man? I had something like the stain asylum, man. That's like the stain asylum. Man. It's like a crazy yeah. house. <laughs> Right. But man, we enjoy it, man. We enjoy it. So, so enjoy like, okay, it. Got it. <laughs> I can't I can't tell you how many times I've been in a role and I got caught in something wicked and I'll stop like yeah. you gotta show me that again. I'm volunteering, like yep. took me yeah, do it, do it, do it again. Yep, yeah, I'm I mean, the same way, dude. Same way. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's it's so oh, weird yeah. when you when you say it out loud, but yeah, but we've been doing this for you know uh, a numerous amount of years where we're like, right, you know this 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 violent thing that we do brings us peace. It does because this is the other thing too, yeah. man. So so I was talking to my wife about this, and uh, she's like, man, man, you're leaving me again to do jitsu, which means she used to do jitsu with me too. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, yeah. So so when she was asking me, man, what is what what. Is it about it? And I was like, all right. So if you look at the human nature, okay, especially especially guys, if we are built to fight and we are built to build things, right? So we're gonna fix things, we're gonna build something, and we wanna fight because that's just in our human nature. Because for thousands of years, we were fighters, I mean, we we're hunters and gatherers, I mean, we would kill for our food. And if you cross us enough, you know, we would challenge you to a fight, to a duel. So if those meet, so if those needs are not met, are not met. Um, so to me, like the rowing, the combative aspect of it is feeling a need that you just can't get anywhere else, anywhere else legally. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, it's like you said, man, people. I mean, we we will go and pay somebody, or someone will pay us to beat them up. I mean, it, 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 come on, come on. I mean, but 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 we need that. We need that. Yeah. And it, and it's it, it and it's to test ourselves. Was it Socrates also also said that's the crime for the human man not to test his, not to know what his, what what his limits are. Amateur or else, or else, 
professionally, right? So, mm. so it, if you don't, so if you don't know how much you can take, um, uh, uh, mentally and and also physically, then what kind of man are you? I mean, that's just right. Him, what kind of person are you? Yeah, so, so that's just what we do, and that's what we love to do. And because I can guarantee this, man, that if I didn't have money, just do it. If I didn't roll at least once or twice a week, every single week, man, I might be in jail or something. <laughs> Some, something's not right. It's, oh, man, something is not right when I'm not able to go to the, I mean, even just going yeah. to the gym in general, but like not being able to train, yeah. not being able to roll. It's like, right. all right, let's, um, I got to do something. Or, yeah. or, something's, or exactly. something's bad is going to happen. So exactly, yeah, it's, exactly. It's, it's definitely a very very weird concept. It's very funny to you know the people who understand it, and it's like it's one of those things where we we can't explain. It's like if you know, you know type right. deal. Right, right, right. And if and if and if you're a Christian, and um, you know, I'm 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 Catholic, but um, but it's but it's like once you're so someone's like. Baptism and, and like being being like reborn, right? So mm-hmm. um, to me, if I can't when I do roll, when I do roll, it's like being being baptized because I come out feeling better. Um, it keeps the it keeps the evil thoughts and evil spirits away from me. <laughs> oh yeah, you know? so. <laughs> very, very much so. Very much so. so yeah, so it kind of keeps those thoughts away and. And that feeling, so that you, so that feeling, that evil feeling, that aggression, and it tones that down a little bit too, man. So like therapy too, in a sense. Yeah. So it's like being baptized and therapy at the exact same time because you come out better, you come out more, more uh, renewed, uh, more confident, and then at sometimes, too, man, you're also more puzzled. Just like me, man, man. How do you do that? How, how do you get me in that? I mean, what what do you do? How do I escape it now, man? That's the, that's like wow, that's that's impressive. Or else it's like, crap, seriously, a wrist lock, mother, man, it's, it's right. like man, I'm all <laughs> kind of things. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's so. it's it's funny, man. But it's you know it I say this all the time. Man. It's it's one of those things, man. I'm so happy that I, that I you know it found me. And I'm able to still do it because even I, I I can go a whole week of training and get up the next day and be like, oh, my body hurt. Everything is just on fire. feels like it just feels like everything is going to fall off at each step. But, you know, yeah. come, eight, yeah. eight o'clock, eight, come eight o'clock, I'm on the max. I hate it, yep. but I'm, I'm, yep. I'm there. Hey, man, you got to be there because if you don't because we're not, man. Because if you're not there, man, you won't feel bad for him for the rest of the day, rest of the week, or for next time, and till next time. And that's not a good thing either. So nah, you got to keep moving. Nah. We were not, we were not meant to, to uh, sit around and, and uh, play video games all day. I mean, we were, we were meant to to move, and we and that we were meant to to fight. So yep. Uh, I mean, we just were. So that's for human nature. And jujitsu apply uh, supplies all that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, well, all right, Andy. So we asked everybody that comes on the show, man. It became a staple of Talk Your Jits podcast. Uh, past or present, the top three people you would love to get a chance to roll with? Oh, man. Past the present. Um, yeah. I love the roll with, uh, G- with uh, Jalen Bell. He would be the well, one on top of my list. Jim Bell would would be one. Um, I would love to roll with um, actually with with uh, with uh, one of my professors again, Dave Vaness. Um, he lives in Florida now, but um, but man, I love to roll with him again because it's been whew, it's probably been about fifteen years, man, since I rolled with him last. So. Yeah, well so overdue. It's been a long time. Well overdue. Yep. And then probably, I'd probably say one of the older older Japanese guys from the Kodokan. Um, probably like either Kimura 
or or Kano or um, or uh, uh, Tominaki. So just the same, or else uh, Funi. So um, so yeah, one for the Con, Chima Bell, and then my I uh, well, my former former instructors. Yeah. Could you imagine, man, rolling with someone of the like of the days of old, where it's like there was no such Dude. thing as limits? <laughs> nope. No. So I so I found some rules online, but but the old Kodakon used to used used to use them. One of them was actually you need to say goodbye to your family because you're gonna die. So, uh, I mean, it was like that total mindset of of that. Uh, <laughs> Samurai mindset, man, and uh, so I mean, they also said, man, you can do man, what you want to use inside your your, your you just do arsenal, arsenal too. Yeah. So, but the limits were very, very slim back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> very, very, very fine print on the bottom page. <laughs> yes, 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 very fine print. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, well, Andy, unless you oh, got yeah. any other questions for me, man, uh, fire away. If not, you know, let people know what you got coming up. Shout out to school. Uh, the, the floor is all yours. Uh, yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me on, too, man. We, uh, I, I really appreciate it. Um, it was also a, it was also a lot of fun. Um, I, think, I think a lot of people, are, they get too invested in technique and whatnot. I mean, like I tell people. If you know what's behind the technique, if you know the personalities, the characters behind jitsu, the philosophy and all that stuff, it makes the it will make your jitsu a little bit more personable and a, mm-hmm. and a little bit more um, uh, meaningful. So, um, so just don't learn technique, but also learn the true history of uh, jitsu, of like any art, any art really, to be honest, and then. Um, you know, and just have fun with it, man. I, I, like I said, I'm located in Monroe, Georgia. Um, we're just, uh, we are operating under hybrid jitsu, hybrid fitness. Um, currently, I'm re- teaching rebuilding out of my garage. Um, and my wife's helped me out with, with that, too. So we're rebuilding. So we got like a little garage dojo. And then um, hey. just have fun. Yeah. So if you want to, man, look us up. I'm on Facebook under, uh, I think it's under Hybrid Jitsu on uh, Facebook. And Instagram, too, is Andy Slayer Hybrid Jitsu Hybrid Fitness. And then uh, we train currently this summer, since, since I'm a school teacher, we train two evenings, two days and Thursdays, and then uh, Thursday morning at 730, and then on most Saturdays at 1030. Depending upon if I have any family commitments, um, right? You know, they come first. So, so mm-hmm. but but when definitely on Tuesdays and Thursdays at, at all times. So, you know, and um, I have currently, you know, I mean, we're just training whatnot more so than anything else, man. I used to put on a little um, tournament every every year. So I'm looking forward to man to get back and to get back. To that, uh, we will invite other schools down. Uh, the rules were set prior to the year two, 2000. So obviously, I mean, you're gonna be courteous, but um, but you could pretty much do it's a mission only tournament and um, open weight class too. So, but you can also uh, with 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 that being said, too, man, it's not like a one time roll when you're done I and mean, you can roll as many times as you would as you want man you can call other people out say hey man i'm gonna get with you all right go you know it could be it's 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 a guy versus guys it's a woman versus a woman it's it's a woman versus guys back and forth and if you don't feel comfortable enough to to roll with the person because for for what reason? Just be like, nah, man. I don't want to roll with you, man. I'm good. So, and the um, and um, you could slam people, man. You could bunny hop people if you wanted to. You could you could hit them almost like a com- combative, but they both have to agree upon that that rule that set. Rule too. set. Yeah. 
Okay. So, so one person <laughs> says yes, one person <laughs> says no, we, then we can't do it. So they both have to right. agree to, to that rule set. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we've been doing combat jiu-jitsu inside tournaments for since, since I started training. That was way back in the 90s. So, you know. So, um, so that was a fun little tournament, man. Everybody loved it. Twenty dollar Matt fee to come in, and man, man, that and the guys who was to roll, the guys who won it were some of my students because because to be the winner was based upon how many times you actually rolled. Man, he must have rolled twenty twenty some times in a two hour block. So. So man, which was a long, which, which, which is like a lot of roles because I want to give people more experience in that type of setting, as opposed to just trying to win all the time. You know, trying to tap the other person. Now, man, you gotta learn. You gotta learn somehow. So, in yeah. some place. So this was a good, good introduction for those people who do want to do do tournaments that they can. They can get the old feeling. Because it was very, very low key, very laid back, so which was very nice. So, so yeah, so that's what we used to do, man. So yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, man, Andy, I, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you taking Thank your time you, out and uh, finally, finally getting, you know, having a sit down <laughs> chat and uh, <laughs> oh yeah, uh, sit down oh, yeah. chat with me. Yeah, but, yeah but no problem. Yeah. Man. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, it's like I appreciate it. Appreciate it so much. Well, that's the end of today's episode. Yep, that's the end of today's episode. I would like to thank Andy one more time for coming on the show and bless us with his jujitsu knowledge. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, Please make sure you go and follow our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube page to stay up to date on all future episodes. This has been Talk Your Jits Podcast. Keep rolling, keep grinding, and remember, long live jujitsu. Have a great day. All right, man. Thank you, bro.